grass-type Pokémon are so important that it's number one in every Pokédex. But how does fighting a plant work? In today's video, we are going to go over every grass-type move in Pokémon and explain how it works. Why is it grass-type? What does the Pokémon do? And I can't think of anything else to say here, so let me just drop an etc. Yeah, uh, so let's begin. Hey, you! Check out Noggin.net for some awesome merchandise and help support the channel. It'll be great. You'll love it. Uh, get grass stains on it. Yeah, now it's topical. Promo's topical, huh? So, Pokemon moves in general have a level of magic involved, but usually there is some basis in reality, or at least an in-universe explanation. And I'd like to start with a category of moves that works as a great starter and is more grounded. Seed moves! Seeds are basically plant eggs. I mean, that's what execute are. So, any move involving a seed seed is clearly grass type for a good reason. Perhaps even the seed contains all of the life energy of the plant, and in this state it's concentrated so more powerful. Yeah? Maybe I'm looking too deep into it. Let's talk about bullet seed. Getting shot by a bullet hurts. Ow. Heck, even just getting shot by paintballs or salt from salt guns hurts, so seeds would be no different. With this move, the user forcefully shoots seeds at the target two to five times in a row. Now, this may seem like a fantasy thing. I mean, a plant itself shooting seeds like how kids in cartoon characters shoot watermelon seeds out of their mouths. Like plants versus zombies, pea shooter plants. Come on. Uh, but no, you'd actually be surprised. There are loads of plants that actually do this in nature. Well, not shooting them at targets like this, that would need sentience. But forcefully ejecting their seeds through a pressurized system is a thing violets and squirting cucumbers among many others do. I mean, heck, the cucumber looks like it shoots the seeds very much bellsprout and pea shooter style. Enough plants do this that there's a term for it, ballisticory. Essentially, the plant shoots its seeds because the fibers in the dried up fruit pull against each other to create tension, and when the tension is great enough, the fruit literally ruptures itself open, ejecting the seeds up to 200 feet away. Which is impressive for a plant, but terrible for a bullet. But that's what this move is based on. Add in real machine gun game mechanics and you get this whole deal. The 2 to 5 hits thing is basically their accuracy. How many shots actually landed on the target, because usually the strategy with machine guns is to mow down the area your enemy is in and hope that some of them hit. Seed Bomb. The user slams a barrage of hard-shelled seeds on the target from above. Oh man, more weapons of warfare, but it's a plant. The move itself is pretty simple to explain. The user just tosses up a huge seed and then lets gravity do the rest. Bonk. And similar to the shooting seeds, some seed pods are known to just rupture and explode. I mean, look at that. Seed bomb. Worry seed is a move that plants a seed on the target. That seed then causes them to worry. It prevents sleep by making the target's ability insomnia. Wow, too real, Game Freak too real. A popular saying in English is sowing the seeds of doubt, where someone would basically cause you to worry so much that you have a hard time sleeping because of the bad vibes in your headspace, you dig? But this move's name in Japanese is good too, it's really good fun. You see, the name worry seed comes from an overly literal translation of the saying Naomi no Tan. It's fun because the kanji can also mean seed, but when used in this saying it means to cause trouble or the cause of trouble. Basically, a worrying thing, a thing to worry about. With seed flare, the user emits a shockwave from its body to attack its target. This may also harshly lower the target's special defense stat. Explained in the movie Giratina and the Sky Warrior, Seed Flare is a process in which Shaman purifies polluted air it inhales into its body and then expels it in the form of light and water. Oh yeah, it's the signature move of Shaman the Hedgehog. And also Shaman the dog. But the move is a very bright explosion of blue, sometimes green, energy that blinds the enemy, hence the special defense lowering, I guess. Can't dodge ranged attacks when you're blinded. As for why it's called Seed Flare though, uh, well Flare, duh, it's bright. But there's nothing inherently spelling out seed for us. Like, is it a plant thing? Yeah, yeah, totally. Plants normally take in CO2, a commonly agreed upon pollutant, and expel oxygen in its place. Plants literally clean the atmosphere. That's their whole job. But that's normally the leaves, not the seeds. So what? Well, if we actually look at the anime, it absorbs the pollutants straight into the seeds. Specifically the seeds. Or, or flowers later, but sometimes the seeds. I mean, seeds are where plants store a lot of the nutrients and toxins that they develop over time. So there you go, I guess. Leech Seed plants a seed on the opponent and absorbs a little bit of HP every turn, healing the user. So plants are crazy. They can suck the life out of anything, even small cracks in concrete. And that's 
pretty much this move. Plants use their roots, which come from seeds, to push their way into anything and leach nutrients out of the ground, or in this case, out of the other Pokémon. It then has some sort of magical connection to the user, which is explained by magic because it's magic. Just like Sappy Seed, the user, partner Eevee, grows a gigantic stalk that scatters seeds to attack the target. The seeds then drain the target's HP every turn. It's just the same thing, but better, because it's partner Eevee. But come to think of it, there are a load of HP sapping grass type moves. So we got Absorb, a nutrient draining attack. The user's HP is restored by half of the damage taken by the target. And I mean, what a plant move. It's just so typical that a plant in a video game has a sort of life drain mechanic, you know? It's just like bugs and vampires in games. But at least vampires, you know, there's magical stuff that explains it. I mean, if you were fighting a plant monster and you took a bite out of it, would you heal? No. Odds are you'd think it's gross because it's green and your mother and I are worried about your diet. Absorb is most likely based on how plants are seen to grow and live, but exaggerated and done through a magical means rather than literally through roots. But this is such a big part of grass type moves that there are two other moves that are the same thing, but better, Mega Drain and Giga Drain. But as a plant grows, it only makes sense that its need for nutrients would increase, much like how real plants' root systems grow as they get bigger. Speaking of, there's the move Ingrain. Rather than magically absorbing life energy from the opponent, the user lays roots that restores a little bit of HP every turn. But because it's rooted, it can't switch out. And well, I mean, it's a plant. And now it's even more of a plant because it's actually acting like a plant. It's not really moving much. And sometimes pulling weeds is a hard because they get crazy roots. So it's easy to see why they can't switch out now. And the healing is easy too. It's just the magical methods of the drain moves, but now it's rapidly absorbing life from the ground on which it stands like a plant. With Strength Sap, the user restores its HP by the same amount as the target's attack stat. It also lowers the target's attack stat. So in essence, it's similar to the drain moves, but instead of sucking up life energy, it's sucking up vitality? Or even muscle fiber? I mean, that's how I'd explain it. Plants are pretty metal. They eat corpses. I guess more specifically, they'd want to eat glycogen. It's the sugars that our bodies store in the muscle fibers so that we can have rapid access to full muscle power in case a puma attacks us or something. Both plants and animals use sugar for energy, so this would be the easiest thing the plant has access to in regards of how this move works. And then there's Horn Leech. The user drains the target's energy with its horns. The user's HP is restored by half the damage taken by the target. Again, it's similar to all of the other drain moves. However, this move is much more direct, as instead of a magical power, this time it's actually a big ol' horn that they're stabbing into ya. At first, this was the signature move of Sawsbuck, whose antlers are tree branches, and tree branches also play a role in the transportation of nutrients, but more so from their leaves, which get it from the sun, not other animals that happen to be sitting on the tree. Man, that'd be terrifying. So, uh, clearly there's still some magic at play. But speaking of tree branches, here's a good ol' honest move. Branch poke. The user attacks the target by poking it with a sharply pointed branch. I mean, you can't get much more true of an attack than that. It's like, poke? Haha! <laughs> Sharp stick goes poke! And then I guess wood hammer would be the upgraded form of it, huh? The user slams its rugged body into the target to attack. This also damages the user quite a lot, though. Does wood count as a grass? I mean, we've talked about it before. I, I guess technically grass type means plant type, and wood is what makes a tree a tree, and trees are plant, so it's like a crab hammer, but with wood. Yeah, wooden mallets and clubs hurt, but wood is not nearly as strong as rock and metal, and so it hurts itself while ramming into the opponent. But still speaking of trees, apples grow on them, and grav apple is the signature move of Flapple. The user inflicts damage by dropping an apple from high above. This also lowers the target's defense stat. The animation shows a tree just suddenly being there and it drops an apple, but considering it's a physical move and it's Flapples, I'm sure it's just Flapple flying up high and then letting gravity do the rest of the work for it. So gravity is what causes causes things to fall, and scientifically speaking, the simple explanation of gravity came from the time that Sir Isaac Newton was sitting in an orchard and got bonked on the old noggin by an apple, and boom! He wondered, why do apples always fall perpendicular to the ground? And thus he began to understand the concepts of gravity and began doing all that research and stuff. So apples and gravity have always kind of gone hand in hand. And fun fact, one newton of force is normally the weight of an apple at sea level, normally 100 grams. Neat. 
Apple Acid is the other apple-based signature move, this time belonging to Appleton, who attacks the target with an acidic liquid created from tart apples. This also lowers the target's special defense stat. Funnily enough, the Japanese name of this move is just straight up Malik Acid, which is also known as Apple Acid, mainly because it's exactly what it is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Malik Acid is the sour, the tart acidity that fruit has, and it just so happens to be mainly found in apples, especially crab apples. Uh, just thinking about those makes my face pucker. Oh, whoa, boy! Fun fact! Most candy that claims to be extremely sour uses this instead of citric acid. So take that, lemons! Now, as for the special effects of both of these moves, they make sense. Special defense is a sort of mental defense, and it's really hard to focus when your face is all puckered up from a tart sour thing. And then for regular defense, well, malic acid is an acid after all. It melts away tooth enamel and can be used to clean things. Multiply that effect via magic, and there you go. Lower physical defense. Now, then. Nothing says grass type more than the moves that literally involve grass. Did you know that grass is leaves? Uh, grass are leaves? A grass is a leaf? There we go. It, it just is leaves. We call them blades of grass because of their shape, but are in fact just leaves. The move Grass Pledge creates a column of grass that hits the target. When used with its water equivalent, its power increases and a vast swamp appears. Oh no, grass! You better watch out because it might be slightly irritating and might cut you with its tiny little blades. Oh no! I jest, but my skin is actually really allergic to grass, so like, I understand. Plus, if you're fighting, I'm sure you're sweating a bunch, and sweat getting into all of those tiny cuts hurts. And now, if a pillar of grass erupts beneath you, of course it's gonna slice you up. Ouch! And when used with the water type move Water Pledge, they form a vast swamp, because we all know when you mix water and grass, you get wet grass. Now, with the move Grass Whistle, the user plays a pleasant melody that lulls the target into a deep sleep. It's just a copy of Sing, the normal type move, but grass. A grass whistle is an instrument technically, but I wouldn't exactly say it's very lulling. Uh, I bet it could be if you were into high-pitched whistle noises that were really irritating. Listen to this. Fun fact! There are professional leaf flute players. Yeah, it's the same thing in concept. So, you know when you tie people's shoelaces together and then they trip and fall and hurt themselves? Well, that's what our next move is, Grass Knot. The user snares the target with grass and trips it. The heavier the target, the greater the move's power. So yeah, the user controls the grass around the battlefield to have it tie up the feet of its opponent. And you know the saying, the bigger they are, the harder they fall? Yeah. Now, Grassy Glide. Gliding on the ground, the user attacks the target. This move always goes first on grassy terrain. It's like a slip and slide, but it stains your pants green. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Grass can be slip at times, especially when wet, so there being grassy terrain would speed up this grass-propelled tackle, and being tackled hurts. But speaking of grassy terrain, with the move Grassy Terrain, the user turns the ground into grassy terrain. This restores a little bit of HP for all of the Pokémon on the ground, and powers up grass-type moves, so on top of making the ground grass, it heals. So it's it's nature magic, you know. Nature magic is usually all healy, hippy-dippy stuff because of medicinal herbs being a big part of healing, which also is probably why the grass-type is filled with moves that involve healing. Hmm. But also, nature magic and plant magic, the magic of springtime, it's all pretty equitable to life magic a lot of the time. Usually due to how plants grow and bloom in the springtime. It's the power of life and the power of nature! But, uh, like, death is also natural. Like, come on, gang. Nature is mega about death and decay just as much as it is about life and stuff. But this is a kid's game, so let's focus on the happy parts, right? So, the terrain is filling each Pokémon with infinity energy or health, as it may be. But why? Well, in the anime, we see that it's almost like a huge sphere that fills the battlefield with a green aura. Obviously green, because grass is green. And all this really does is explain that it is, in fact, wholly a magical thing with no basis in science. Like most Pokemon, really. And just like the move Energy Ball, the user draws power from nature and fires it at the target. This may also lower the target's special defense stat. It's like Dragon Ball Z's Spirit Bomb, but nature-themed. But it was already nature-themed. But now it's green, and it takes only one turn because the Pokemon world, I guess, is filled with just that much more life and power than the Dragon Ball Z world. But basically, this is just a concentrated ball of infinity energy that originates from nature, and thus it is grass-type. Even though fairy-type would also work. But it's grass-type. And just like all of the power in Dragon Ball Z, Forest's Curse is also just fairy tale magic. Beware of the dark dealings of the Black Woods, for vile nature is at work here, and woe be to the foe who has bestowed the Forest's Curse. The user puts a forest-based curse on the target. The target is now grass-type as well. 
A very interesting move. Changing the opponent's types during combat is always a super fun maneuver, great for strategizing. And there are all sorts of mythical, legendary beasts that have plants integrated within them. And in Europe, there are so many stories about the spooky woods. It's scary. And being cursed and turned into a tree is all a part of that. In Pokemon, though, looking at the move's animation, it seems like these large, dark, spooky trees surround the target, likely then integrating themselves into the target's essence. In quotes. I mean, it's the signature move of Trevenant, the ghost grass mon known for cursing. So it's perfectly fitting. It's a ghostly grass spooky move thing. Frenzy Plant is also somewhat magic tree themed, and in Japanese it's called Hard Plant, just wanted to say that. With this move, the user slams the target with the roots of an enormous tree. The user can't move on the next turn though. This move is only learnable by fully evolved grass starters, so perhaps it's only usable by the strongest of Pokemon. In my mind, in canon, starters are rare, right? I mean, Oak gave you the choice of three rare Pokemon, and rare usually means good because it's a video game after all. So, you know, it makes sense that this bunch of Pokemon happen to be the ones that can learn it. But on top of that, you also need your friendship maximized to even be taught this move, so it must take a lot of skill, trust, and power to pull off. So, with this move, your plant mon summons all of its power to control and or summon some crazy tree roots, which then just smack the heck out of the enemy. It's entirely plant-bending nature druid magic stuff. They just go crazy with it, which is exhausting, which is why they gotta rest on the next turn, recharge their magic. Rillab Boom has a means of doing basically the same thing, just to a lesser extent though, with the power of music. With its own signature move, drum beating, the drum's roots attack the target and lower their speed stat. I mean, it makes sense, feet all tangled up in roots, but it also works on levitating and flying Pokemon, so I assume that's just game mechanics. Or maybe it's because the music of the drums puts them off of their own beat, it throws off their groove. Hmm? Either way, it hurts because roots were smacking them. But speaking of smacks and whips, with Power Whip, the user violently whirls its vines, tentacles, or the like to harshly lash at the target. It's simple. It whips powerfully. It's kind of a trope at this point that all plant monsters have tentacly vines that they can use to manipulate things around their environment, as most plants tend to lack fingers or even arms. And being as bendy and long as vines can be, the connection to whips is easy. Oh yeah, vine whip, the other move that's just the same but worse. It's the same, but worse. But speaking of vines, jungle healing. There's a connection, trust me. Jungle healing is the signature mood of Zarud, and Zarud is all about swinging on vines and having vines inside of it. So, I mean, there's one connection to vines already, but there's more. Don't worry. With this move, Zarud becomes one with the jungle, restoring HP and healing any status conditions that it or its allies have. So, it's grass healy nature magic again, clearly, but jungle themed. As for why it's Zarud's signature move, though, I have a few ideas. One is that the movie and his habitat are in the jungle and he's almost like a jungle guardian spirit. So of course he'd have like the only jungle themed move. And being a guardian spirit just fits because they protect. When you heal things, you're protecting them. But also, he's a weird combo of many monkey and ape things, and orangutans have been known to use jungle herbs and plants, vines especially, to create poultices. A poultice is a gross, goopy glop of medicinal paste that you usually apply to wounds and injuries to help the healing process. Essentially, a super low-tech band-aid. Yeah, orangutans do that! They're so smart! Synthesis is another grass healing move. The user restores its own HP. The amount of HP regained varies with the weather. Aha! A healing move that isn't stealing health or some weird gimmick of the jungle! Plus, it's based off of a real-world thing that is easily explained and everyone really should know what photosynthesis is by this time in their life. But here's a refresher. <clears throat> Sun hot. Hot is energy. Energy can do thing. Thing in plant need hot to make into other thing. That thing? Food. Food for plant. Plant grow because food good and tasty. Done. Really though, this is the whole thing that plants do. They turn sunlight into energy, and then use that sun's energy to convert all of the nutrients that it brings in with its roots into things that it can actually use as energy to make plant good. Solar Beam pulls from the same idea. The user takes a turn to gather up a bunch of sunlight, converts it into a form it can work with, and then fires it. And like with Synthesis, if it's a sunny day, the charging habit's faster because more sun. 
More sun. Good. There's Solar Blade also, a two-turn attack that has the user gather light and fill a blade with the light's energy, attacking the target on the next turn. Basically, it's like enchanting a sword right before you slash with it. But the sword is a leaf, and the enchantment is photosynthesis. But hey, I guess that makes it a step above Leaf Blade. With Leaf Blade, the user handles a sharp leaf like a sword and attacks by cutting its target. Critical hits land more easily. I mean, slices and stabs, they, they can be pretty critical a lot of the time. So there's that. We already talked about how blades of grass are sharp and are leaves, but on top of this, plenty of other plants and even trees have sharp, painful leaves too. We normally think sharp means perfectly thin and smooth to slice through whatever we need, but sharp can also mean pointed. And in nature, points are easier to keep around and replace than long, thin edges. So most cutting things in nature are actually serrated. Heck, most plants have tiny bits of silica, also known as glass, in their system. Yeah, they are glass edged. Well, more or less. But the takeaway is that plants can be just as sharp as steel. What I'm getting at is that leaves can hurt, okay? So obviously there's going to be a load of leaf-based moves. Like Razor Leaf, sharp-edged leaves are launched to slash at opposing Pokémon. Critical hits land more easily. It's basically the same as Leaf Blade, but a ranged attack. But for a leaf to actually be razor sharp, it'd have to have some crazy ma magic nature power, right? Like with Magical Leaf, the user scatters curious leaves that chase the target. This attack never misses. It's, it's just Razor Leaf, but with even more magic involved, because now they're enemy-seeking leaves. With Leaf Tornado, the user attacks its target by encircling it in sharp leaves. This attack may also lower the target's accuracy. Leaves. Leaves. I mean, ah! Just, just think Sharknado, but with leaves! Oh, that's just a regular tornado a lot of the time. Hmm. Well, sharp leaves hurt, and Tornado Wind makes the moves less accurate. So, uh, with Leaf Storm, the user whips up a storm of leaves around the target. The attack's recoil harshly lowers the user's special attack stat. So, it's not a tornado anymore, it's a storm. Gotcha. Otherwise, same basic logic, and whipping up all of that stormy, magically done wind takes a toll on the user, which makes their special attack stat lower. And then with leafage, the user attacks by pelting the target with leaves. Another leaf move that just kind of throws leaves at the opponent. How good. It's simple, and I like it. It's kind of like rock throw, but the name is rather odd. Leaf age? Is that a joke on foliage, but with leaf added? That's not really a joke. Hmm. Uh, but the definition of foliage, which also happens to be the name of this move in Japanese, is healthy green leaves. The name is redundant, that's all I'm saying. It's an alright move though. Now then, here's a question. What's similar to leaves, but aren't leaves? Petals, I guess. I needed a segue. With Petal Blizzard, the user stirs up a violent Petal Blizzard. Wow. It's exactly like Leaf Storm, but with petals. So what the heck? How do petals hurt? I mean, the edges of the leaves are super sharp and pokey, okay, but petals are soft and luxurious. It's most likely some sort of symbolic visual part of the spell they are casting, I guess. I mean, huge blasts of pink petally energy emanate from the petals, so there's gotta be some magical leaf magic petal stuff going on. Petals charged with infinity energy. Yeah. Aromatherapy has the user release a soothing scent that heals all status conditions affecting the user's party. And it shows a bunch of pretty petals all floating around because flowers and petals smell very nice and are pretty powerful in terms of your psychology. Aromatherapy is the use of aromatic essential oils medicinally to improve the health of the body, mind, and spirit. And most essential oils come from plants. But I'm sure in this huge world of ours, people use other sources of smells to help their mental health. I mean, technically bacon is an aromatherapy. I know it cures my sleepiness. Basically, aromatherapy works by using your olfactory sense, aka the nose, to bring molecules into your limbic system, the part of the brain that controls your nose along with emotions, long-term memory, and decision-making. Did you know that all of those things are done in the same part of the brain? How strange. Brains are weird. But I mean, they do say that smell is the strongest emotion, but uh, well, it makes sense that they're all kind of the same group in the brain. That's why smell has a particular effect on memory. Smelling certain things can often jolt up all sorts of memories, good and bad. But anyway, typically, aromatherapy is used to relieve stress or other ailments, hence why it heals all sorts of ailments in game. I mean, lavender is used to calm people down, and lemongrass is used for headaches. But then, too many people, <clears throat> sorry too many Karens take it too far and ruin the whole perception of aromatherapy for everyone. Thanks. 
Maybe we could convince them enough aromatherapy is all it takes to undo the autism part of vaccines. Anyway, with Petal Dance, the user attacks the target by scattering petals for two to three turns. The user then becomes confused. Flowers are fabulous, okay? But they are also very pretty and fun to watch. However, apparently Pokemon are still dumb because they get distracted and confused when there are too many things going on on screen and that's what this is trying to replicate, I guess. Sensory overload at its basic level. Just too many things in the sky. But I guess it's also potentially confusing to the user because you're telling it to scatter petals all over the battlefield and attack with that? Like, petals don't hurt. Why are you making me do this? Scattering petals everywhere is usually a sign of celebration. We have not won yet. What are you doing, trainer? Is this some sort of romantic setup? Are you trying to breed me? Trainer, why? Why do you do this to me? This is, we are in the middle of a Pokemon battle. It is not the time to be scattering petals. I am so confused. Like petals, cotton is also a very soft plant part. And with the move Cotton Guard, the user protects itself by wrapping its body in soft cotton, which drastically raises its defense stat. Quick pop quiz! What is the strongest and most important part of a knight's getup? Correct! The sword. But next up would be the gambeson, the cloth layer under the steel that provides pinch relief from the armor, along with ample protection from slashing and stabbing and bludgeoning attacks. The gambeson is mainly made of a nice, thick cotton, which dampened blows on its own, but then it was strongly woven to stop stabs. I mean, if you stab chainmail, the tip may still make it in. And also, just think of wearing chainmail with nothing underneath. Ew. Also, ow. And then the move Cotton Spore. The user releases cotton-like spores that cling to opposing Pokemon, which harshly lower their speed stats. Like, it, it, it's perfect, because I personally know that these cotton spores, from experience, suck to drive and even walk through. It's like a flurry of small white dots in the sky. It's snowing, but it's, it's bad for the allergies. It's all over the sky. It's on the ground. It's in the car. It's everywhere. And lowering the speed of opponents is pretty true. I mean, you can't really move fast when you can't see well, and that it gunks up everything that it can. But speaking of spores, that's the next move. Spore! The user scatters bursts of mushroom spores that induce sleep. Wait, isn't that just sleep powder? Sleep powder. The user scatters a big cloud of sleep-inducing dust around the target, making them sleep. What?! Uh, sleep powder is much less accurate, so spore is just better, I guess. Uh, plus, much fewer Pokémon learn it, too. Uh, but anyway, both of these moves work similar to aromatherapy again. It affects the target's olfactory system, lulling the target to sleep. It's just like Mega Lavender or something. But now, why is Spore the better one? Well, because media often depicts spores as more sinister, because mushrooms thrive off of decay and death. So it's possible that the spores are getting into your respiratory system, which is connected to your blood, right? So the spores just mess stuff up in your brain and cause you to shut down for a while. And in fact, this might be why Spore has the only 100% chance of sleep, because the spores directly affect the brain, rather than just being sleepy smell time. But anyway, then Stun Spore has the user scatter a cloud of numbing powder that paralyzes the target. I'm tempted to say it's Mushroom Spores again, messing with your brain functions, causing paralysis, but the move's name in Japanese is Numbing Powder, and it's known by a load of Pokémon, not just Mushroom Pokémon. Lots of bugs, too. And, well, the list of numbing agents found in plants and insects is long and extensive, so just know that it's a really easy connection to base a move on. Now, aside from mushrooms, which aren't even actually plants, cactuses are probably my favorite plant, and the move Needle Arm has the user attack by wildly swinging around its thorny arms. This may also make the target flinch. There's, there's nothing weird here. It's just very straightforward and perfect for a cactus. Thorns hurt, needles hurt, though normally they are used as a defense, but I guess that's just because plants don't normally attack things actively. But that's also why there's the move Spiky Shield. In addition to protecting the user from attacks, this move also damages any attacker that makes direct contact. This is exactly why cacti have spikes and roses have thorns. It's a pretty decent deterrent against messing with them. Do you not want to be hurt right now? Then I would recommend not kicking that cactus. With the move Trop Kick, the user, Serena, lands an intense kick of tropical origins on the target. This also lowers the target's attack stack. Okay, first off, Trop Kick? Like a drop kick? Is that the idea here? But it's charged with grass-type infinity energy, so it's tropical? Since Serena is a tropical fruit? Yeah, I guess so. Plus, she's all about her powerful legs, so she deserves a drop kick. And then, Snap Trap. The user snares the target in a snap trap for four to five turns, which is a fun chain of words. Snap Trap. It's like a clap trap, but he talks too much, so Slap Trap is way better. It's a trap that goes snap, like a bear trap, which is why this is the signature move of Galarian Stunfisk. 
Wait, hang on. Why does a ground steel type Pokemon have its signature move be grass type? And what even is the point of this move being grass type if it's like a snap trap? Steel would work better because steel is what they are literally made of. What? Why? Well, I'll tell you why. So a lot of signature moves will only be signature for a single generation or even a single game. And then the next generation or the next game, they give it to both new and older Pokemon. We have a big video about this and other signature move details right here. And this move, while fitting of Galarian Stunfisk, would also fit perfectly with Carnivine, a Gen 4 Pokemon. Gen 4 remakes coming soon. But it would also fit well with the Victory Bell line. Plenty of Grassmon. But until then, and if they don't give that move to them, then really, this move should really not be Grass type. Bloom Doom is the grass type Z move. The user collects energy from plants using its Z power and attacks the target with full force. I'm sure this move is the way that it is exclusively because Bloom Doom sounds fun. Also, it's a good juxtaposition. Flowers are a symbol of life and love, which is kind of the opposite of Doom, so it's funny. Otherwise, it's just a Z energy attack that happens to be grass type. Max Overgrowth is the grass type Dynamax move. The user turns the ground into grass grassy terrain for five turns by blasting a load of grass energy and seeds at the opponent. Those seeds are massive and explode, so it makes sense that it hurts, and also that grass grows everywhere. Easy. But again, mushrooms are not actually plants. Why are they the de facto grass type Dynamax move thing? Just do trees or bushes or something instead. G-Max Drum Solo is the G-Max move Gigantamax Rillaboom uses. So Rillaboom can control its wooden drum because plant magic. And when you Gigantamax it, its abilities are increased because it's very big now. It's a big gorilla, and the power of its drumming arms increase, so it only makes sense that its power of doing the drum root stuff only gets stronger as well. G-Max Tartness is exclusive to Gigantamax Flapple. It reduces its opponent's evasiveness, and it shoots huge seeds that instantly grow to be extremely tart apples. Not apple trees? Just apples. Straight out of the ground, like a pineapple, but it's not a pineapple, it's an apple apple. Okay, Game Freak, we talked about tartness earlier, how apples have huge amounts of malic acid. It's basically a giant form of apple acid, but this time the name is referring to tartness instead of its acid-like properties. Uh, also, it's flapples instead of appletons now. Appleton, instead, gets G-Max Sweetness. It heals the status conditions of allies. It's the same animation of huge seeds to apples that explode, and uh, explosions hurt still, so there's that. And the only thing I can think of involving status condition healing of your own team is the classic saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And lastly, G-Max Vine Lash, the move for Gigantamax Venusaur, who, by the way, looks even more fitting of the grass type, if you know what I mean. Okay, so this move is like Vine Whip but way bigger. It's just huge, mega, gigantic vine whip. It's actually one of the much more straightforward G moves in this series. It just hits them, nothing crazy, just smack. And now they're covered in vines, so they continually get hurt afterwards. Very good. And uh, huh, there we go. Honestly, there was only that one move that would probably be better of not being grass type, the snap trap one, but even it has its reasons. So the grass type is pretty solid, though I guess it is kind of hard to be considered grass type if it's not plant based, and if it isn't plant based, then how is it grass type? Hmm. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I love you. Check out noggin.net for cool merch, and until next time, never stop using your noggin.